Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In this video, renowned entrepreneur and Bitcoin advocate Michael Saylor shares his insights on the current macroeconomic landscape and the implications for Bitcoin. Saylor's journey into the world of Bitcoin began in 2020 amidst the global economic downturn caused by the pandemic. As interest rates plummeted and the world's economy ground to a halt, Saylor recognized the similarities between attempting to halt time and keeping interest rates at zero. However, as central banks began raising interest rates rapidly, it led to a precarious situation where the worldwide economy teetered on the edge of a crash. Saylor draws an analogy to the movie Top Gun, where the plane, representing the economy, is pushed to the brink, risking blackouts or even the tearing off of wings. In this video, Saylor highlights the challenges faced by central banks in reversing the excesses of a prolonged period of low interest rates and the repercussions it has on global currencies and inflation. Saylor outlines the macro cycle, emphasizing that while inflation has somewhat receded, it still remains higher than interest rates. Increasing interest rates further poses risks to both the stability of Western banks and the currencies of developing nations. The pressure is mounting on the banking community to strike a delicate balance between curbing inflation and preserving the stability of the global financial system. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. I discovered Bitcoin starting around March, April of 2020, and that's because the world came to a grinding halt. Interest rates went to zero. Uh, the lockdown shut down the economy everywhere in the world. It's a uh, the plane stopped flying, the ship stopped moving, the cars stopped driving. And I looked at, at the interest rates at zero and I thought, this is kind of the same as trying to stop the passage of time. And for about 18 months, the entire economy was kind of frozen and stuck. And then uh, around about a year ago, a bit more than a year ago, the Federal Reserve started raising the short-term interest rates and they went from zero to 25 to 50 to 75 to 100. And they went straight up to 500 basis points. Uh, and, they, and that's the fastest rate of, of increase in the interest rate in our lifetimes, you know, in our business career. And so I like, to, I like to think of it as it's like in Top Gun 2, the movie, where the interest rates were about 250 basis points in the middle of 2018, and then the Fed's flying the plane and it gets about 180 basis points in about February of 2020, and then it steep dives down to zero and it buzzes the valley. This is flying the world's economy at zero for about 18 months. And then someone decided that they could go into a 9G lift and they just started pulling back on the wings of the plane and they're flying as hard as they can um, up to 500 basis points. And that's the point at which you either black out or you rip the wings off the airplane, right? Uh, and in uh, the movie Top Gun, the pilot started black out. But we, we've got the point where the plane is almost about to stall, the plane being the worldwide economy. A lot of people are blacking out. Uh, you saw this in the UK about six months ago where the prime minister and the head of the, the, the minister of the exchequer lost their jobs in a matter of weeks because they almost blew up the entire insurance, pension fund and banking business in the UK. A few months after that, we started ripping the wings off of uh, the banking system in the U.S. and we saw the failure of Silicon Valley Bank and Silvergate Bank and Signature Bank and First Republic Bank. Anticipating the challenges of raising interest rates, Saylor suggests that economists might redefine inflation metrics. He predicts a shift away from the Consumer Price Index CPI, towards alternative inflation measures that aim to lower reported inflation levels. Economists could adjust the market basket of goods and services used to calculate inflation, removing expensive items and replacing them with cheaper alternatives. This approach could create the illusion of lower inflation, allowing policymakers to navigate the complex macroeconomic challenges more comfortably. To address the broader economic complexities, Saylor speculates that financial institutions may resort to employing novel financial instruments, such as swaps. These mechanisms would enable the exchange of vast sums of money for other currencies, essentially conducting off-balance sheet adjustments.
The primary purpose of these instruments would be to support struggling currencies, prevent bond crashes, and maintain an environment of controlled inflation. Additionally, Sailor humorously envisions aid finance YouTube videos, incorporating adjusted metrics like CPI to simplify the understanding of these nuanced economic concepts. And so where we are right now is we're getting to the end of that, uh, of that um, incredible adjustment where the, the bankers are trying to reverse the excesses of taking interest to zero. And um, the result is we know we can't keep raising interest rates much faster, much longer, because we'll just crash the entire US and Western European banking complex. I mean, all the banks are technically insolvent when, uh, when they raise interest rates that fast because they crash the bonds. So the, uh, the Western bankers have slowed down that process. Now they're ambivalent. Can they move forward uh, a little bit? Do they have to back off a bit? Um, what's happened in the meantime that people don't notice is when we cranked the interest rates up so fast, we destroyed the value of all the sovereign debt and all the, all the long mid-sized debt in the world. What we're also doing is we're sucking all of the energy out of second, uh, out of the developing world currencies. So indirectly, um, or maybe directly, uh, the, the interest rate saga has crushed the currencies of Turkey and the currencies of Argentina and the currencies of, of every developing nation that doesn't have an extremely strong economy, they're all collapsing right now. So where are we in the macro cycle? We're at the point where the um, inflation hasn't really gone away. It's backed off of the most extremes, but we still have inflation in excess of the interest rate. We can't really keep raising interest rates without destroying all of our allies' currencies. And we can't raise interest rates without destroying a lot of the Western banks and pension funds and, and the rest of the bond complex. So the political pressure is going to grow on the banking community uh, to stop raising rates. But of course, they're going to want the inflation to go away. And they're going to want to save all of these other developing nations. So I would expect the logical thing to happen now is all of the um, all the economists will start to redefine inflation, and so instead of hearing CPI, you're gonna you're gonna see other inflation measures that we want to focus on. They're gonna redefine the measure. They're going to make uh, make adjustments to the market basket of goods and services in the inflation metric. So we're going to take out expensive items and put cheap items into the index so that the CPI looks lower. And you're going to start to see new novel financial instruments like swaps where, you know, where we're simply going to swap billions or hundreds of billions of dollars for hundreds of billions of dollars of another currency. It'll be an off balance sheet adjustment. And all of these things will be meant to massage the macroeconomic problem. We'll, we'll be trying to support other currencies. We'll be trying to keep our bonds uh, from crashing. We'll be trying to make the inflation look lower. We're going to renormalize. Shifting his focus to Bitcoin, Saylor reflects on his own exploration of the cryptocurrency. Starting with Bitcoin's inception and its decentralized network, Saylor acknowledges the emergence of individuals determined to improve the system. These dedicated individuals have poured their efforts into Lightning, a technology designed to enhance Bitcoin's scalability, security, and utility. Saylor highlights their relentless work over the years and the significant amounts of capital raised to support Bitcoin-related ventures. These efforts, Saylor asserts, represent the genuine believers in Bitcoin and its potential to revolutionize the financial landscape. So instead of 2% inflation, maybe it'll be 3% is normal. And instead of 3% of inflation defined 10 years ago, it'll be 3% of the, of the new inflation metric that we just came up with because this is the proper one. because. The world is different today and technology is different. And of course, pretty soon you'll have ad financed YouTube videos in the CPI because that's a little bit easier metric to manage. So I, I think we're at that cycle where the money printing is going to continue. 
we're going to have uh, more of a delamination between monetary inflation and asset inflation and producer price inflation and CPI inflation and the general inflation rate. And, uh, and politicians and bankers are going to struggle to hold it all together with a lot of novel new programs and new ideas. Bitcoin's a rabbit hole, and when you start going down the rabbit hole, first you have to learn all about Bitcoin, and then you have to learn all about the block size wars, and then you have to learn about the history of the crypto industry. And somewhere along the way, I, I started uh, studying uh, Gary Gensler. I took his class at MIT. I went back and I watched every minute of 20 lectures at MIT. And then I started reading everything written by anybody. And as you know, um, I read all the lawsuits. I read the CFTC lawsuit. I read the Bittrex lawsuit. I, I read the Coinbase lawsuit, the Binance lawsuits, all of the legal judgments. And I listen to all the congressional testimony, like every minute, like everything that every congressperson or every senator has said about Bitcoin for the past three years. This is true. And then, and then I talk to you about it. OK, and, and so here's my opinion. Right. Um, first of all, in the beginning, there was Bitcoin and it was good. And there was a unit of account and it was called BTC. And there was a network that could not be censored and it was called Bitcoin. And then along came smart people that learned about Bitcoin and they arrived to fix Bitcoin. <laughs> I just heard about Bitcoin. I'm here to fix Bitcoin. And they divided into two, two factions. There are the people that heard about Bitcoin and wanted to help Bitcoin the hard way. And that's, they worked on lightning and it took years from 2015 and they're still working on it six, seven, eight years later. And they worked on Bitcoin applications and they worked on Bitcoin companies and they worked very hard to, to raise millions and tens of millions and hundreds of millions and billions of dollars to buy Bitcoin. That's the hard way. And those people are in this room and they're in the Bitcoin ecosystem and that's Bitcoin and lightning and, uh, and Bitcoin maximalists and people that believe in Bitcoin. 